In some television markets, people get two different versions of the same channel. This is usually caused by affiliates being nearby. For example, while living in New Jersey receiving the ABC affiliate from both New York City and Philadelphia, or living in Southern California and getting both the Los Angeles and San Diego stations. For the most part, these appear to be the same channel in all except local news and some daytime programming, with the exception that one is actually closer and more clear than the other. These channels, in reality, should not occur. Television markets are set up to focus around one city, and offering two different versions of the same channel in one market can split viewership in the ever-competitive ratings race. If you are to watch the channel with worse reception from the city that is further away, you'll start to notice that the news reports major events that never occurred on people that aren't real on technology that shouldn't exist. The ads are for products that you have never heard of. The conspiracy theorists think that these television stations belong to an alternate world. They point to the fact that the news tends to be getting worse over there, more separate from our own. There are reports of looking into an alternate world and invading it for their own. Just pray they aren't talking about us. The Wyoming incident, or the Wyoming hijacking, is a lesser-known case of television broadcast hijacking slash hacking. A hacker managed to interrupt broadcasts from a local programming channel believed to serve several smaller communities in the county of Niagara and aired his slash her own video. The video contained numerous clips of disembodied human heads showing various emotions and poses. The camera position changed often, usually every 10 to 15 seconds, and the video was often interrupted by a special presentation announcement. This clip is taken from one of these intervals. The video is mostly locally well-known and would probably not even be that popular if it were not for the effects it had on the few residents who watched it for an extended period of time. Complaints included vomiting, hallucinations, headaches, etc. While some believed it was paranormal, specialists have determined that the cause of these afflictions were frequencies played regularly throughout the broadcast. In this clip, the frequency being played is somewhere between 17 and 19 Hz. This range of frequency, when played for long periods of time, causes the eyes to subtly vibrate, sometimes inducing visual hallucinations. This video is significant in that it's one of the most recent television hijackings. Such actions were rare even in the 80s, search for Chicago Max Headroom incident, and are even more rare today. The hacker has not yet been caught, and all attempts to trace the video have proven futile. In 1988, a mysterious explosion destroyed the home of the Amos family in Heswall, England. When firemen sifted through the burnt-out shell of the house, they found a framed picture entitled The Crying Boy, which was a portrait of an angelic-looking boy with a sorrowful expression and a tear rolling down his cheek. But the picture was not even seen by the blaze. Not long afterwards in Bradford, there was another blaze, and again a picture of the crying child was found intact among the smoldering ruins. The head of the Yorkshire Fire Brigade told the national newspapers that pictures of the weird crying boy were frequently found intact in the rubble of houses that had been mysteriously burnt to the ground. Journalists asked him if he thought that the picture was evil and could somehow start the fires, but the fire chief refused to comment. The reports of the unlucky painting causing fires are still occasionally reported. There was a crying boy picture found at a gutted house in Dublin in 1998, but no one has ever found out just who the child is in the supposedly cursed painting. One well-respected researcher into occult matters, a retired schoolmaster from Devon named George Mallory, claimed that to have uncovered the truth in 1995. Mr. Mallory claimed he tracked down the artist behind a controversial portrait, an old Spanish postcard artist named Francis Seville, who lives in Madrid. Seville said the crying boy was a little street urchin he had found wandering around Madrid in 1969. 
He never spoke and had a very sorrowful look in his eyes. Seville painted the boy, and the Catholic priest said the boy was Don Danilo, a child who had run away after seeing his parents die in a blaze. The priest told the artist to have nothing to do with the runaway, because wherever he settled, fires of unknown origin would mysteriously break out. The villagers called him Diablo. Because of this, Seville ignored the superstitious priest and looked after the boy. The paintings of a little sad orphan made Seville fairly rich, but one day, his studio was mysteriously burned to the ground. Seville was ruined, and he accused the little Don Danilo of arson. The boy ran off crying, and was never seen again. Then, from all over Europe, came the reports of the unlucky crying boy paintings causing blazes. Seville was also regarded as a jinx, and no one commissioned him to paint, or would even look at his paintings. In 1976, a car exploded into a firewall on the outskirts of Barcelona after crashing into a wall. The victim was charged beyond recognition, but part of the victim's driving license in the glove compartment was only partly burned. The name on the license was one 19-year-old Don Danilo. Could this have been the same Don Danilo who had been the subject of the crying boy painting eight years earlier? We will probably never know, as no friends or relations ever came forward for the body.